amazing to see this underwater view. We pardon this interruption and now back to our regular programming. Now making our way back to Sesame Street land up ahead of us. Really enjoyed that orca encounter though. It was a fun one. Glad I had a chance to see it today. And I'm gonna have to catch some of those other shoes shows in the future. But Sesame Street land should be right ahead of us here. I actually think this is one other entrance to Sesame Street land. I think we're actually in Sesame Street land. So cool to see both entrances here. All right, we are indeed back in Sesame Street land. You can meet Elmo here. I saw meet Cookie Monster here. Wow, meet all those main characters there. There's Sea Carousel on our left and we'll continue making our way around and see what else we can find here. But maybe it'd be nice to get some photos with Elmo and friends. I feel like I'm gonna try to prioritize, do the turtle trek and that sort of thing before I do too many rides here in Sesame Street land. But because there's so many rides I still haven't done all over the place. So we'll have to see what sounds right. But here's a little bit of this area as I'm walking through it. And it, it looks nice. You know, I'm still trying to get an understanding of what's where. It looks like maybe this is a train. Oh, Elmo's Choo Choo Train right up ahead here. So it looks like this is an attraction. An Elmo's Choo Choo Train attraction right here. Yes, for little ones to enjoy. Wow, that actually looks uh, a little fun one. Like a lot like a really fun attraction. Oh, wow, it looks like bigger ones can maybe get on this attraction as well. If you have young ones with you, maybe. Looks like, oh, parade reserved seating. I wonder when the parade is. Well, that's all about. I didn't see that on the park map. I'll have to look again. Here's story time with Big Bird over here. One, two, three, Sesame Place right there. Continuing down that street. And on the other side, it's a little bit of a, like a play place over here. If you see, oh yeah, look at this. We've got Rosita's Harmony Hills for a play place over here. And on the other side of it looks like that Cookie Monster attraction. I'm not sure I should walk through this one to get to Cookie Monster. I think I'll walk around. Further back here near Super Grover's Hut, looks like we've got the Cookie Drop. Ooh, Cookie Drop with Cookie Monster. I don't know, I'm pretty tempted by the cookie drop because who doesn't love a good cookie monster? <laughs> yes. And then we got Twirl and Hurl over down that way, or Twirl and Whirl, excuse me, Twirl and Whirl with Big Bird. So it's nice to see both of these attractions here. This one's kind of like a classic, you go up on the thing and it drops you back down. And that one's more of a spin, almost like a teacup kind of ride. So Super Grover has a ride too, Super Grover's Boxcar Derby, but it looks like this is the exit only on this one. You can see friends racing by here on Super Grover's Racing Derby there. It looks like a more mild coaster than some of those other ones we've been on, but nice to see the family attractions here as well in Sesame Street Land. And here is Slimy Slider. That's the Oscar the Grouch ride we were looking at earlier. It does look like a fun one, almost like the pirate ships that used to rock back and forth, kind of twist side to side. But again, it looks like it doesn't fit too many people, so therefore the line might be long. I think I'll probably save that one for the younger ones who can't do some of those more intense rides. But you can see it's nice to see all the variety of activities here in Sesame Street Land. All right, nice to check out a bit of Sesame Street Land and check out this ride here. Looks like you move almost like a DDR mat and control the ride in Sesame Street Land. Very cool. Glad we had a chance to check this one out. Now I'm thinking we'll make that loop back around and catch Turtle Trek. That's definitely what I want to do. I was recommended that by a few team members and I heard it's very clearly visible that the animals in there are rescues. It's a unique one in that way. So I'd love to take the time and check that one out. Let's go see if we can catch that one here today. As I'm walking away from Sesame Place, here's Wild Arctic. I heard Wild Arctic, the ride is closed, but the auditorium's open or something along those lines. Animal exhibit is open, but the ride is closed. Maybe because I'm here, I'm walking by. Maybe I'll just take a look at that animal exhibit. You know, it looks like it's a 10 minute walking with the video intro here uh, for that ride. So let's just take a quick tour, see that 10 minute tour and see how it goes. First room here is the show as we're making our way into the Wild Arctic little theater set up here. I'm gonna make my way sort of past this one for now just again to try to maximize my time, make sure I see it all. And I wanna see what this uh, exhibit looks like up ahead. But maybe we'll come back for that show as well. So it's quite a walkway on this one, but it looks like we've made it. We're gonna see maybe Beluga and Walrus and that sort of thing, main station here up ahead. You know, it definitely seems like you're kind of being shipped off to the Arctic here. And as you step in this room, it definitely feels like you're immersed in the world of this Arctic as well, which is amazing. Ice sculptures all around you. I wanna see what's in that main pit there that everybody's looking at. It'd be nice to see. There's definitely some sort of water down there. There must be some life forms as well. So there we go. If you look closely, you can see something swimming around over there. It looks like maybe a sea lion 
or something along those lines. Nice to take the time and look at the water here. And something tells me if we go further that way, we'll see an underwater view, which is always the best part. So I heard that we have the seals here and we're still waiting to see if there's gonna be belugas in less than half an hour or so apparently should be belugas coming back this way. But right now it's just seals in this exhibit. And I'm gonna continue sort of forward here to see if we can find those uh, sort of underwater views. Making my way forward here, looking for those underwater views. It looks like I came across a different perspective on those seals, which is very nice. And again, I'm curious to see if he's talking about beluga whales. I'm curious to see how they'd even fit in this water, but the cast member or the team member definitely had lots of different individuals speaking with him as well, interested in figuring out what's going on here. It does seem quite quiet on the water, but I did see some seals come up for a little while. I wasn't sure if they were seals or sea lions, but I guess they are seals. It's good to know. Oh, look at him right down there. One kind of swimming past us. Definitely looking forward to getting a better look at him. Oh, there's one guy right there. Look at that. Swimming right towards us right now. Not getting splashed on this one, which is nice. Here we have another angle on those seals. Looks like different exhibits. This one almost looks brighter and warmer for these seals in here. So interesting to see how they have multiple setups for maybe multiple different types of seals. Looks like a manatee up here. A closer view of one of the manatees. Interesting. Different tank, different animal. So we've got a variety of different sea creatures here in these tanks. I like it. Ooh, and here we go. Some of those underwater views. Looks like that same... Oh, is that a walrus? I thought it was a manatee, but you could see his horns. If you look really closely, he's got horns sticking out of there. So it must be a walrus hanging out that we thought of, that I thought of stairs was a manatee. Wow, nice to see his kind of underwater play place here. Just kind of hanging out in that corner, maybe eating something or just kind of sniffing around from the snack. Who knows? But wow, nice to see his walrus hanging out here. And I'd love to get a better look, so we'll see. We'll just cross our fingers, hope he swims this way. Look at these guys swimming around up here. You can see these different animals swimming through the water. It looks like they're breathing up top. I'm not sure really what they are. It looks like maybe seals going on. There's several of them in the back there as well. So nice to see them swimming here. It looks like there's plenty of seal tanks here today. Lots of seals swimming around all over the place and all these different tanks kind of throughout the uh, aquarium. So different environments for different seals. I wonder why that is. But it's good to see, and there's a couple playing in the back there. Oh, let's see if we can get a closer look at that. Here's those seals playing back there. You can see having a grand old time here in the water. I like it. And this final room here looks like is kind of some of the history, some of the information, artifacts, that kind of thing for the world of some of these sea creatures. So how do you measure up? Compare your group to these Arctic heavy hitters. It tells you how much they weigh from harbor seals all the way up to walruses. And it tells you how much I weigh. And I, I didn't realize I weigh that much here. But uh, nice to see how I compare. I'm about half a harbor seal. I'm about one-tenth of a polar bear. I'm about one-twentieth of a walrus. Or maybe that's one-thirtieth. Oh my gosh. I came back to get a closer look at some of these seals here. Seems a little bit less crowded right now. And more crowded further down the hall. Look at those seals wrestling and playing back there. I don't know if you can see them all the way in the back. And look at these seals swimming by as well. Wow, really nice to see majestic creatures swimming by in their natural sort of play style back there. I don't know if you can see them again kind of clearly. Those two right here is what you're looking for. And they've just kind of been wrestling and playing around for a good uh, several minutes here. I saw them as I was walking by the first time, but wanted to share a closer look with you. So it's nice to see. It's, it's pretty funny to see that they, uh, that they do that. And that concludes that exploring adventure through this particular venue. Nice to see. You know, it did seem a little bit especially crowded on that one. And the belugas weren't there. Maybe it was beluga seals to keep my eyes open for in the future. But nice to see a different view of some different water mammals. Now I'm making my way hopefully to that turtle trek. I'll see what else catches my eye along the way. But that's the goal at least. Look at some of this cute merch on the way out here. Look at this little Shamu 2020. The sea world hat and the hoodie. Very cute. And then you got some whales and different sea creatures here as well. Look at these guys. Like blue fluffy guy. We got a couple rainbow pink and yellow ones. I got a pink guy right here, a little narwhal whale looking dude with the big eyes right there. They're pretty cute. They, they definitely make tempting uh, propositions for me, but uh, I don't know if I need too many fluffy creatures here today. Ooh, and this side has the penguins. Look at this purple shirt penguin. Oh, look at this cute little eye, big eye penguin with a scarf on. Got this blue shirt penguin here, purple shirt penguin. Two different styles of penguin. Look at this kind of walrus looking guy right here. Maybe that's a walrus and a polar bear. Wow, very cute sea creatures here today. And here is where this concert is happening tonight. It's a nice setup to it. I love this stadium. At the same time, though, 
I'm not sure I necessarily want to take the time to check this one out because there's so much to do and so little time. It's my first adventure to SeaWorld. So maybe, maybe I'll check out a little bit of the show or maybe I won't. Maybe I'll save it till another time. I'm not extremely familiar with the band today either, but nice to see they do those concert style venues as well. Now I'm considering a couple of different options for uh, to later tonight's snack because I want to try at least one more food item before the end of the night here. And I'm considering a couple different ones. The Polynesian market has a, I want to say an ahi sort of bowl or box or something like that with some fish in a poke bowl. That sounded really good. And then of course there's the chicken and waffles at America and the brisket nachos at America or at the American market. So it's a question, you know, American or Polynesian market and how many items will I get? I guess we'll find out in a bit. And it's nice to see here a list of the 2020 events at SeaWorld. If you're looking for that sort of thing, you can see all the different events taking place. Elmo's birthday celebration there, food festivals where we're at right now, all the way from Christmas celebration, Halloween, all kinds of cool stuff. We'll have to check out in the future. Glad we get a chance to get an idea of what these events are to come up here. And this is the dolphin nursery. Apparently all the dolphins are in the back right now. However, it's nice to see kind of the setup here where you can view some dolphins at the nursery. I know a lot of people are making their way around to the far side as well, but I just want to get a better view of kind of what this area looks like, you know? You can see a couple of noses back there, some dolphin noses, they're all kind of hanging out back there. But it's nice to see, it almost looks like some sort of show could be projected on this screen. And there's a few dolphins actually swimming back there now, so it's nice to see from this angle too. And as I've never been to SeaWorld, it's nice to see all these shops along the walkway here again kind of crowded here today at least it seems but uh lots of uh, shops along the way here you've got plenty of food kiosks in addition for the food festival and i'm sure we'll come back for some more of those later but nice to just see how they've themed the park you know lots of mexico theming right here for the mexican market i'm sure for the food festival but a lot of the overall theming i feel like is very kind of beachy and oceany which makes sense walking under the manta coaster yet again i gotta tell you i'm tempted to at least check the wait time to see how long it is i feel like it'd be nice to ride those coasters a couple times especially if they're short because those have been some of my favorite rides so far especially if you're looking to stay dry i liked atlantis but you get a little bit wet on that one so these coasters are way up there in terms of some of the best here so i may end up doing it again we'll see so the wait time for manta is currently 30 minutes i was just curious i was just curious and i feel like i'm gonna try to catch turtle trek first you know because i want to make sure i do the new stuff but it's nice to see that 30 minute wait and i wonder if kraken is still a walk-on because i'll try that one again too if it's a walk-on so we remember the dolphin viewing was down here and the turtle trek sign is pointing this way so we're heading this way try not to walk the wrong way out into the outlook again i'm thinking i might be walking up onto that upper viewing point but i think that's just not making a left up here so we'll see but nice to again see more of SeaWorld, all of SeaWorld here today. Nice long day, enjoying the entire day at SeaWorld, seeing it all. Love to see this coloration, different colored plants all along the way. And let's see if we can catch some Turtle Trek. All right, here is Turtle Trek. It's a three-part experience, underwater viewing of manatees, underwater viewing of sea turtles, and a 360-degree theater. Now seems like a good time to check it out. Let's make this one happen. You can see the design on the way in. It's very aquatic, and it's an outdoor walkway, which I'm sure will take us indoors here momentarily. Yeah, it's fun to see. Sometimes it seems like places are very crowded, streets are very crowded, stretches are very crowded. And then other times it's totally empty and I'm here by myself. So I like this kind of solo space right now where I can show you all these things. Not have to worry about anyone else being, or me being in anyone else's way or anything like that. I can show you all the sights here. So you can help join the journey. Join us on the journey. Very nice with the manatee and the sea turtles right there have thrived on our blue planet for millions of years. Now they're surrounded with extinction. No! Nice that we're being conscious of those causes and making sure we're doing the best we can to support these animals. And it's nice to see the efforts here. So let's make our way through. There's a lot of signs along the way as well telling you more about that process of taking care of the animals. I think these were the same manatees I saw earlier, but it's amazing to see this underwater view. They look absolutely huge from down here. You can see their massive signs, their huge tails as they're eating the lettuce up there. I think this is that rehabilitation area for those manatees that we saw on the top side. So nice to see it from down here as well. More manatee tanks here. This one with plenty of fish in the sea. You can see all these different fish swimming around with the manatees, which is nice to kind of see how they get along together in the same environment. Really interesting looking fish too, if you look at them. Check out the turtle tank here. You can see several different fish in this tank over here 
or in this ocean or wherever we're at, this habitat. And there's some turtles. There's one big guy over there. There's another guy swimming out there. Nice to see the turtles swim around up there. Here comes a turtle swimming by right above us right here. You can see what his swimming journey looks like. I feel like turtles are extremely nice to see in action. So we're glad we're seeing a little bit of him swimming by here today. What's going on, buddy? He's swimming right by us right here. All right. That's awesome to see. Really amazing. And in this corner right here, it definitely looks like this turtle is fast asleep, taking a little nap in there. Nice to see kind of some of the action here in the tank. Again, sleeping turtle. Oh, you can see he's kind of missing that top right fin there. So res rescue for sure. Nice to see him here as a part of the habitat. Nice to see the turtles. And in this final room here, not sure how much of this one I can share with you, but it's a movie taking place in here. Nice to see him. I'm gonna try to be quiet, but a 360 degree movie is amazing. Just finished up with that 360 degree show in Turtle Trek. And that one's an amazing one. I love the 360 on that one. You see all these animals up close, including turtles, dolphins, sharks. And it tells a great story of the turtle's journey and the importance of protecting the environment, which I can really appreciate. So glad I had a chance to see that one. I saw about a show and a half of that one. Now making my way out of Turtle Trek to see the rest of the Sea World universe. It is getting a little bit later here tonight, but still hope to see a little bit more before we call it a night. And we had seen the manatees from above, but this is the sea turtle nest, green sea turtle, loggerhead sea turtle, and hawksbill sea turtle. Oh, and there's one right there. So glad I get to see them from above as well. I personally think that most of these things, the underwater view is better, but it's nice to see him from up top here as well. See what he looks like swimming on the go, Mr. Turtle here. If I had to pick one, make a guess, I'd call him maybe a hawksbill. Uh, maybe he's a green sea turtle, I'm not sure, but I don't think he's that last one, but who knows? I'm no expert here, so nice again to have that look of the water sea life from up here as we're making our way out of that turtle track. And on the back of your park map, I don't know if I pointed this out before, you can see all those show times, more information about all those attractions. I did find out back here, the Sky Tower is an additional charge per person, so uh, I don't know if I'll do that one here today, or maybe loop back around on that one another day. But now I'm back out here by Manta, and I want to see again if we can figure out what the wait time is for Manta. And if not, maybe we'll figure out what the wait time is for Kraken. If that's a walk on again, I'm going to do it. And then I'm still thinking about that food a little bit later tonight. I want to give it maybe another hour or so, but I'd like to grab some food after that. Uh-oh, funnel cakes served here. Got to watch out for that. They smell really, really good from here as well. One of these days I'll try them, but for now, just kind of smelling them and walking by. You know I gotta stick with that Seven Seas Food Festival for now at SeaWorld, but one of these days, I'm sure I'll try more of the food. Now continuing our way around, let's see what that Manta wait time looks like. Yes. I forgot about this aquarium right by Manta here, so I'm thinking if the wait time here on Manta is a little bit long, let's do that aquarium right by Manta because I want to check out the new things still. There's still so much to see. It's just that I love those coasters, so it looks like, oh, but it's only 15 minutes. Manta. So maybe I'll do Manta and then I'll do the aquarium. How's that sound? Definitely a much shorter queue on Manta since I'm walking straight through a lot of these aquarium areas. But I remember now seeing Manta and seeing all the rays as we're walking through the queue makes me want to see that aquarium upstairs after this attraction that much more. You know, there's a lot of cool stuff in all these tanks. This guy was a little snail looking guy. I'm not sure exactly what he is, but it seems like he's breathing in there. So that'd be cool to learn more about too. I love how a lot of these attractions allow you to kind of self-select your queue here. This time I'm waiting it out for row one. Might be a couple extra rides, but for me right now it's worth it since I've been on one of the further back ones. I want to try that front row. Don't know if I showed you the angle of those vehicles already, but that's what they look like. They kind of tip you up on your back being top size, a 90 degree angle turn. Really interesting, cool setup of this attraction. Why it's one of my favorites so far. Just got off the front row of Manta, and I gotta tell you, front row was worth it. I'm glad I waited for front row this time. Fantastic ride. You could see the track ahead of you. At the same time, the twists and turns were amazing. I, this time, I also wasn't holding on so much. I was kind of just doing the free flying thing, letting myself kind of go free flying, hang in there, as opposed to holding on to the railing. I loved it. This was a great one, even better than that last time around on Manta. Such a fun coaster. Definitely, for me right now, number one, but you never know, it could be subject to change. 
Now we'll make our way into this aquarium and see what those mantas look like from the top side. All right, walk way down to see those mantas. Kind of tells you the circle of life here for those mantas as well. Gotta love this waterfall right by the entrance and let's see what it looks like on the inside. Already passed a couple of tanks here with some of Dory's friends and that sort of thing, but this one is unique. Now this one looks like it's got the manta. So you can see a manta coming right towards me right now. And I think overhead is kind of a glass area for them to glide over. So it would be amazing to see them just kind of glide over above us here. But you can see them swimming off in the distance and we'll see if anybody comes up above us here in a minute. And there's a hammerhead directly above us right there. You can see that one swimming in that kind of upper deck area. Nice to see some fish swimming up there too. Keep your eyes open though for that manta to be swimming above us. Like, <laughs> like seeing those sharks overhead for sure. That's a fantastic sort of view. See their underbellies there, wow. There's a manta. There he is, kind of out the corner of our overhead area, but he was still kind of there in frame. Something else I hadn't seen yet here at SeaWorld is look at these, what looks like maybe sea anemone, isn't that what these are? And you've got a starfish there, wow. I didn't realize their arms bent like that, that they were so kind of bulbousy in the middle. And I'd always seen the classic like Patrick Star or, you know, Finding Nemo starfish. Really interesting to see how they all just kind of come in all shapes and sizes. Not to mention half of his arm is hanging off the wall. What's going on with that? But really nice to see kind of the natural. Oh, there's some more classic looking starfish kind of up there in the back. Okay, so this guy's a, kind of a bigger guy versus those starfish in the back are a little bit smaller. Ooh, here's the starfish against the wall kind of facing us. Wow. Kind of on that corner. And there's this big old starfish, a couple of old starfish in the back. This guy kind of crammed his way into the corner. More of those sea anemone. And this guy right here, I'm not sure what that guy is, a spiky one. There's definitely something red in there glowing, but it might be my camera reflection. I think that's exactly what it is, is the reflection of my camera. So ignore that. But this is really cool to see. Take a look at that, wow. Wow, here we have a nice view of the water and the wildlife. Now you get in that queue as well in Manta, but it's just a much better view here in the aquarium. Look at this kind of, I think it's a shark or some kind of sharky guy. Ooh, and the Manta right next to him. And floating overhead and gliding overhead. Really nice to see and kind of this smaller natural life here in front of us. A little black fishy right here, kind of Nemo looking fishy. And you've got this kind of natural stuff growing on this other thing. And I don't know what any of them are called. But it's nice to see, oh look at that little baby. Black fishy Nemo guy right there. Clownfish, black clownfish maybe? Is that a thing? I'm not sure. But nice to see everything through this window. That fish back there is huge. If anyone knows what that big thing is. Like shark looking thing like a giant catfish or something. But we got hammerheads in here. We got all kinds of different mantas. I want to know what the different kind of mantas are at some point too. There's that guy I'm talking about. Wow. What a variety of sea life. What a view right here, I love it. And check out these little guys right here as well. See these kind of fish, like needlefish or something like that, kind of floating upward. Not sure what they're doing. They're all just kind of looking down and now they're all kind of floating upward. I'm not sure why or what, what they're going for exactly. Maybe they eat the stuff that comes off this thing. I'm not really sure. But, uh, oh, and here they come, slowly back down, wow. Again, really unique, amazing to see. I feel like this is fantastic. If you're into sea life and seeing it in its natural habitat or kind of how it naturally interacts with the ocean, with the environment, really cool to see here, sea world. Ooh, is that a seahorse right there? Look at that right there, it looks like a seahorse. Again, I'm, I'm surprised to see they don't look as, uh, what do you call it, as natural, as even as you see in some of these movies, but I guess it makes a lot of sense. I'm pretty sure it's a seahorse. With the, see all the things that stick off of them. Again, didn't even realize that they had those. I feel like I've seen them before. Is it, am I crazy to say that I've seen seahorses that don't have that stuff? But maybe this is not a seahorse. Maybe this is something else. But there's a whole bunch of them back there. See how easily they been blend in with those plants and natural bushes back there. Wow. There's one, two, three, four, five back there. All in that kind of region right there. Maybe different perspective we can get a better view on them. But this kind of pool here, or this fountain, whatever we want to call this, tank has creatures all the way around. Oh, here's some more of those kind of seahorse looking guys, if you can see them pretty clearly. Again, they do such a good job of blending in. It just seems like they're naturally floating in the environment as if they're twigs or something along those lines. And maybe that's the whole point. Maybe this is like a twig seahorse where they just kind of blend in with the environment and maybe eat uh, microscopic, uh, who knows. There's some more natural looking seahorses in there, but here's this also kind of what do you call that? Krill lobster looking guy? It looks like, uh, yeah, kind of crazy looking with all those whiskers going on. I'm not sure what you call that again, but see, he's got the claws and the whiskers. Wow. And then the seahorses kind of inside 
those little, let me see if I can give you a closer look here. Inside those little uh, plant things here. Seahorses blending in on this one as well. Those are the seahorses I was envisioning in my head that I've seen, so I'm not crazy to think I've seen seahorses that don't have that other thing going on. Maybe those other ones weren't seahorses. And here's that biggest tank of the mantas. You can see a bunch of different types of mantas in here. Here's that big catfish shark looking dude again. And all kinds of other cool stuff swimming around in here. Here's a little bit of education over here in terms of different types of clownfish and anemone. And you can see them in the tank here. And look, there's a crawl space where individuals, little, little kids can actually fit in the middle. Maybe I'm gonna see if I can crawl in there myself in a bit. Inside this fish tank here, the one that you're able to crawl into. You can see beneath these clownfish, you can look around and see the anemones. Wow, I love how they build this. So you can see all the nature around you. It's fantastic, unbelievable. And I hear obviously an echo of myself in here, but it makes it that much easier to uh, share the fun with you and to be able to speak and hear myself clearly. Wow, awesome to see some of that fish tank in there at SeaWorld. This is such an amazing experience to be able to see it all. So glad I can share it with you. And again, thanks to the SeaWorld team for bringing me here today. By the way, if I didn't already mention, make sure you check in the links in the description below. If you're motivated to come to SeaWorld after watching this video, check those links in the description. And if you don't see the one you're looking for, the particular type of ticket, let me know. And I'll see if I can share that one with you as well. Now I'm thinking I'm gonna check out some more of that food. I'm gonna see if I can get to maybe that American booth and get some of those chicken and waffles, or maybe I'll get some of the, uh, what was it, the brisket nachos, something like that. Let's see what those things look like here tonight. I think that'd be a great way to kind of continue our evening adventure. You know, I was walking towards the waterfront and I was thinking to myself, Kraken was also on my to-do list. It's probably better to do that before eating the food. So let's see what the wait time looks like on the Kraken ride, that one again and give you that perspective for the second run. Let's see what the wait time looks like. Now walking back into Antarctica. I really do like Antarctica because you know I love penguins. And it's nice to see this kind of here later in the evening. I feel like it's also easier to go on some of these coasters later in the evening because you don't have the sun in your eyes as directly. Because you have to leave your sunglasses in, uh, in the kind of the side compartment or whatever it might be so you don't lose them. So nice to see kind of what sunset time-ish looks like here. And there's a ca Expedition Cafe dining venue on my left here. All kinds of stuff to see. There's there's so much to see here. I'm glad I'm getting the chance to get this first look. And you can see non-riders 15 and ride entry 35 for the Empire of the Penguin. Five minutes again for the Kraken. Must be my lucky day here walking on to this one. And we'll see if we try things a little bit differently. I'm pretty sure last time I waited for the front row, so maybe this time I try a different row and share my thoughts with you on that one. Or maybe, I don't know. Well, we'll see. Whatever sounds like fun here. I also debate bringing the camera, but I feel like I'm still new to the rides and I don't want to lose it, you know? So I, don't, I want to make sure I'm very careful on that front. So I think I probably am not going to video this time around just because I don't want to misplace the camera here. But it's definitely an idea for future adventures. But it's nice to show you kind of the external view of the coaster, kind of, you can see it at ground level as we're making our way around as well. Just got off Kraken for the second time. And I gotta say a couple of observations that I made. First of all, I feel like Kraken would have been harder to hold on to my camera than the Manta. So I'm glad I didn't attempt that, at least this time around. And that's because there's some, I feel like some of these twists and turns are really intense and high speed. And although the other one, Manta, has some unique twists and turns too, I feel like this is kind of more jostles you as it does it. Another thing on this one is this, I feel like it's kind of more mechanical. You can hear those creaking sounds as you're going up that initial ramp or as those floorboards are moving out, that kind of thing. So a couple things to know about Kraken if you're gonna compare it to Manta. I feel like it's probably older, but it's a great one. High intensity thrills. It may be more intense than Manta, but I like Manta for its uniqueness. You know what I mean? That kind of flying feeling where you're like, you know, on your back and you're, you're a Manta is what I'm saying. That being said, both Kraken and Manta are definitely coasters I would do again, including Armeco is too, but I feel like they're great coasters overall. I'm just ranking them against each other. Don't mean to be too critical in this ranking criteria. I mean, again, they're, they're both great. They're all great and I would ride them all again. Now let's see if we can grab some of those snacks that I was excited for. Glacial Collections got penguins. Check out this merchandise shop here in SeaWorld. There's a lot of cool merch throughout a lot of these stores here, but you know I love penguins. You gotta love the penguin merch. So I gotta take a closer look at the penguin merch, am I right? Look at these rainbow penguins here. All kinds of different penguins. 
in addition to other plushies, but obviously a lot more of a penguin focus here in the penguin gift shop. Oh, look at those walruses. I don't think I've seen those either. Those squishy little noses right there, and little kind of, what do you call them? Teeth? I don't know. I'm not sure what they call those. Oh, little penguin, what would you call this? It says almost a salt and pepper shaker right there. Penguin uh, decorations, like a ceramic decoration in penguin. Cool cash, is that what that says? Oh, it's a bank. It's a penguin bank. There you go, look at that. I love that mini plates, penguins. These cups for penguins. Wow, all kinds of nice stuff here. Glad we're checking out some of this penguin merch. All these shops are so unique. And I really like that aspect as well. I feel like there's a, a true advantage to seeing different merchandise in all the shops. That way you have more variety to choose from. And I've been seeing a lot of people wearing the merch as well, which probably speaks to that point. And I know we're not eating here today, but just to get an idea for future days, what food is available in some of these dining venues. Wow, it looks really good. There's a unique set of food. Here's a sort of Italian salad, that kind of thing. Over here, you've got Asian grill with some pastas and noodles and chickens. That kind of thing looks awesome. Over here, you've got stateside chicken. I'm guessing this one's gonna be more American style, and indeed it is, look at that. Mac and cheese, chicken nuggets, that kind of thing. Nice, I like how they've themed it to a variety of different cultures. Just left Antarctica, still making my way towards food, but here's a Dippin' Dots. They've got a lot of traditional flavors, including birthday cake, that's cool. But look at this, sea berry splash. I imagine that one's unique. Nice to see they've got some unique variety spliced in to even some of your favorites. Ooh, I forgot about the shark wreck reef. Should we see some sharks here? Might be a little bit scary, but the main entrance is this way. We'll see what it looks like when we get around to that area, but look how crowded it is out here. Maybe not, just because there's so many people hanging out in this area. I think it's for the food and wine, or not the food and wine, but the Seven Seas Food Festival. Hanging out, that's why people are hanging out here. Seven. You can see what these crowds look like out here for the Seven Seas Food Festival. Very popular for people to kind of enjoy some dance party time right here. Good to know that's a fun event to do at the Seven Seas Food Festival. I think I found our shark encounter here. Look how full these waters are. They've got mantas, they've got sharks maybe. They've got these big old fish in there. Yeah, there's a shark right there. Wow, really full. You can see in the back, it's got listed out all the things. Brown banded bamboo shark, southern ray, Pacific black tip shark, uh, jack there. Oh, powerful predators, really. The Crevalle jack, kind of like the fastest sharks. They have evenly tailed, evenly shaped tails for added swimming strength. Wow, the rays, leopard sharks. Again, you can see how full the waters are. Look at that kind of leopard looking ray over there. I'm gonna make it to the other side of this tank over here. You got a tarpon, you've got a bamboo shark. So I guess this is all the aggressive animals. So it's nice to see a couple of fish are mixed in with these rays and these sharks. All I imagine pretty scary predators in here. It's really big fish if you look at them. To the left, to the left. I found it surprisingly difficult to find the American market here, but you'll see that kind of dance party, Mako's all back there. I'm here on the waterfront side now, and there's a couple down this way, including the American market right over here. So I want to take a look at what they got in terms of a couple of those options. And you can see the performance is taking place over there. Maybe I should drop in that one a little bit later and see what that show looks like. And here's a look at that American menu. Here's chicken and waffle and the brisket nachos. Nice I was able to get a picture, and I decided I'm going to try the chicken and waffle here. They're both $8. So we'll see how good they are here today. A little sampler of the chicken and waffle. It looks fantastic though, so we'll see how it goes. So I've got the chicken and waffles here, and as you might expect, it's chicken and it's waffles. The chicken and waffles, you've got maple syrup on that waffle right there, and the kind of, what is it, uh, sriracha sauce on the chicken. Interesting combo, I'm excited to dig in here and see how this one tastes. Looks a little bit different from that picture that I saw, but still looks fantastic. All right, ready to dig into these chicken and waffles here and let you know what we think. I do like these chicken and waffles. It's a really interesting blend between the spicy sriracha and the sweet sauce on the waffle. I can see why they asked, do you want the sriracha on the chicken? Because you have to know what you're getting into, what you're getting yourself into that one. Typical chicken and waffles, you probably wouldn't have that sriracha, but I like the flavor combination. I think it's quite good. Definitely a winner here. Maybe my favorite so far at the festival. I, I definitely like how it's got a lot of flavor that pops on this one. But who knows, we'll have to keep trying. I feel like the chicken and waffles are best eaten together to maximize that spicy flavor. I had a hard time putting the chicken on top of the waffle and biting it the first time around. So then I took a bite of the chicken and then a bite of the waffle in the same chew. And I feel like that's the way to do it, to maximize that flavor impact, the sweet and the spicy. 
And that concludes my chicken and waffles. They were delicious. I did enjoy them. Very spicy again, extremely spicy with that sriracha on there. So make sure you know if you want sriracha and how much sriracha you want. Because that's definitely the strongest flavor of the whole thing is sriracha for me on that chicken and waffles. I thought it was good, but I definitely want to try more as well and see if I can find a new best in the future here at the Seven Seas Food Festival. Now I'm thinking tonight, maybe I'll make my way over to that sea carousel. I saw that one and I'm like, maybe that'd be nice to check out here tonight. In addition to that sea carousel, you can see from a distance here, that concert is playing right there on that stage, that seaside stage, Bayside or something like that. So I'd love to at least walk by and check that one out a little bit. I'm not sure I'd be able to share any of that with you, but to just be able to see it myself and let you know what I think of it would be really cool. So we'll see if I can catch that one on the way out. Don't know how packed it is, but we'll have to see. And I'm starting to ask myself another question. Do I say apologies or you're welcome if this ends up being the longest vlog I've ever made? So whichever the right answer is, that one. And we'll see if it ends up being that long. But a couple more items here today I want to check out. Oh, hey, that's a good idea. Relax and recharge. It's a cell phone charging station or whatever you have the plugs for. You want to charge, bring it over to that station right there. I probably should have brought my cell phone charger. I just didn't realize they'd have something like that. Or maybe I should have brought my GoPro battery charger because I'm running through them here tonight. This is cool. Some outdoor games here to save the river. You see people wearing alligator faces. And on the other side, Infinity Falls. I know it's closed, but this is the closest I've been. I've never seen it yet. I hadn't walked past it before, so nice to see Infinity Falls. That's the sign for it right there off in the distance. One of these days when it's back open, we'll have to check this one out. It's got a very, very nice look to it. Annual maintenance is what it's closed for, so hopefully it'll be open again soon. Another item that's very tempting is the sweets market here for the Seven Seas Festival. Look at this rainbow cheesecake cone. Looks crazy good. So does that banana cheesecake cone there. Yes, yeah, five to six dollars there so hmm maybe at some point we'll think about it i mean you know me I'll, I'll probably resist the urge but they do look really nice now we're coming up on sesame street land and last time i was here i thought the sea carousel was one of the sesame street land rides but now i'm learning that it's part of this part of the park this separate area sea of discovery or something like that and each of the separate regions of the parks is a sea name so it's interesting to learn that as well and we'll see if we can jump on this one here today and here is the sea carousel looking forward to checking out a bit of the sea carousel here and let's see how this one goes check out the look here of the sea carousel just looking for an open vehicle i think i found a little fishy right here yeah so nice to see all these aquatic creatures out here so the announcement said buckle your seatbelt, but i i don't seem to fit in this seatbelt. So maybe the seatbelt is not for adults. I'm not sure, but here we go. And check out the view from this carousel. Always have to appreciate the nice nighttime views. There's the Orca Encounter building we passed earlier. Through here, everyone's having a great time. I'm wondering if they're gonna play music on this one as well. But there's the entrance to the carousel right across from Sesame Street Land. Maybe I'll, I'll drop in there after this and see if I can catch some final rides in Sesame Street Land. But nice to be able to enjoy the carousel here. It sounds like a nice, quiet ambience carousel. It still has that ocean theming if you look at the ride vehicle as well as the kind of decorations that go nearby and next to the ride. Nice to check out a bit of this carousel here today. Definitely a nice, slow, relaxing carousel. Great for kids here across from Sesame Street Land. You guessed it. All right, you know what? I'm gonna meet Cookie Monster and Elmo. You gotta do it. You're here. Like, let's make it happen, right? All right, Cookie Monster, how's it going? Oh, love it. I'm wondering, did you save me any cookies? Oh, you're, you're hiding them in the drawer, aren't you? They're, they're, they're in the drawer. He's glued it shut because, oh, okay. He already ate them all, okay. If you're sure, I think you might be hiding some in there. Oh, you think I ate some too? That's a good point. You're right. I got to work on that for sure. I'll work on it. All right. All right, Elmo. How's it going? All right. Yeah. Having a great day so far. Great to see you here. I was wondering when we were going to find you. And here you are. Yeah, you're waiting for us. I was asking Cookie and he said he didn't save me any cookies. I wonder if you saved any good snacks. Oh, a crayon. Okay. Let me... Something tells me not very good. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thanks, though. It's a good thought. Nice thought. I forgot to bring snacks for Elmo. Oh, I'll work on that next time. I'll, I'll bring something. It'll be delicious and red as well. Sounds good. You got it. I'll see you soon. Thanks. 
Thanks. Awesome to get pictures with Elmo and Cookie Monster. They were extremely interactive. Lots of hugs. But I guess what can you expect, right, from Elmo and Cookie Monster? Of course, in Sesame Street. And I love these posters as well for these different shows, musicals. Look at this. Mess Dive Story. You got Scent up there instead of Rent. You got a lot of good ones here. Pigeon on the Roof. You got the Sod Couple here. All kinds of great ones. Man of La Mancha right there. Bear Spray might be my favorite. So many good ones. Which one's your favorite here on this page? Let me know. Is it, uh, is it Scrambleton? Scrambleton's supposed to be a good one. Irked. Irked has got a good look to it. It's funny. You go from Wicked to Irked. I feel like that's a, that's a pretty good one. Since we're here, we may as well see if we can catch a ride or two, see what these lines look like. I actually should probably still check to see if I can catch a little bit of that concert too. But I want to see what these lines are like here in Sesame Street Land since, you know, it's the end of the night and I want to catch a few. See, I worry a line like this is going to be just as long as the Abbey's Flower Tower was. So I think I might skip on this one. But it's a really cool look to it. You see Slimy Slider there. And they're sliding back and forth on that ride vehicle. Again, I think it'd probably be a little bit too long of a wait. But nice to see for future opportunities. All right, if Sesame Street's got the waits because the rides are less, there's less ride vehicles. I bet you it's a really short wait on rides like Manta instead. Let's see if we can catch a Manta here before the end of the night. On my way back towards the front of the park, I'm remembering the concert's gonna be through here. So I'm gonna see if I can take a quick look at that or maybe a nice long look at that as we make our way through and tell you what that's all about after I check it out. Nice to see that concert taking place back there, but very interestingly to me, they're singing in Spanish. Surprised to hear they were singing in Spanish. Makes it a little bit difficult for me to understand the lyrics or the message of the song, but very energetic performers. They were wearing a couple unique costumes. I want to say maybe more authentic costumes of the culture or maybe pirate costumes. It was one or the other. And there's a lot of dancing on stage too. It was great. A lot of audience engagement. You could hear people even singing along with the music. So it definitely seems like it appeals to a large crowd there in terms of that music. But interesting that, again, I wasn't expecting to walk into that when I started hearing Spanish speaking music. And it did seem like quite a full house as well at that concert. So nice to see they have a lot of interest in that music. It was very nice music. Again, those performers were very engaging in those costumes, dancing around, playing a variety of instruments, including, I wanna say like, not a timpani, but those different sequenced drums and a variety of other instruments there. And I'm glad I had the chance to check it out. Now I wanna see what the wait times are like up front. It's just about the end of the night here, but if I can get on a last few and provide a few final thoughts, overall fantastic day, and glad we had the chance to enjoy this one together. I'm telling you, it's the end of the night and I feel like this is another street I haven't walked on. Here's Sweet Sale and Candy, a SeaWorld store up here. Okay, maybe this is one that kind of diverges, right? So maybe earlier I went that way instead of this way, but you got Cypress Bakery, that kind of thing. Again, so many streets and side streets with shops and that kind of thing. It's so easy to not see it all or to get lost, but I'm glad I'm noticing all these details as I go along. This is a really cool shop here as well. Actually, some of these merchandise, check out some of these plushies. I like how they have a lot of SeaWorld rescue swag, but I like a lot of these plushies here as well. Turtles, dolphins, and the like. Nice to see a little bit of this shop here today. I'm getting a bad feeling about this because it's dark out and I'm not seeing any mantas get launched here or anywhere on the track. Uh, I hope they haven't already closed the attraction. They might. I thought the uh, park closed a little bit later. But maybe they closed the rides an hour before, or maybe the ride is just down, also a possibility. We'll see what it looks like up ahead here. So it was that last option. The ride is down here at Manta. So let's see if we can check out maybe one other tonight before the night ends, but it's been a great time spending the adventure here. Oh man, I'm glad I came back to Antarctica for the end of the night here because look at how it glows here at night. Nice to see different colors lit up the top of that glacier back there and these different rocks along the way. I'm curious to see what the wait time is for the Empire of the Penguin or I might just walk in to look at the penguins because they're super cute. So let's see what that looks like. So it's a 20 minute ride and a 15 minute non-ride. I think I'm gonna go ahead and ride, which I'm pretty sure is this way and we'll be on our way. Ooh, that line does look kind of long there. 20 minutes though? If it's 20 minutes, then that's all right. But I don't know, I get the feeling it's a little longer. This time I'm going for the mild one just to see what the differences are here so I can let you know. And to be fair, I didn't really feel like the wild one was very wild. It, it did spin and that sort of thing, but there wasn't much to it. So we'll see how much more mild it can get. One final look at the penguins here tonight. Gotta catch those penguins. 
for a nice end of the night adventure. And look at they're doing some cleaning, taking care of the Penguin universe here, Penguin world. And I'll tell you, uh, it did seem like the difference between that mild and the wild there was the spinning. So it's it's not, I wouldn't call it a very intense ride either way, but if you want really mild, make sure you can check out mild. But I think that ride's probably okay for most in terms of the wild version. Uh, again, depends on what you like. But love to see these penguins a little swimming, kind of flying around, not flying, but you know, like waving around here on the land and in the sea. And I found out the reason their arms stick out like that, they hold their arms out like that, is because they're hot, right? You know how we bundle up over a coal? Well, they let their arms out like that because they're feeling hot, which then makes me wonder, why don't we do that? Why don't we stick our arms out when it's too hot? I hadn't thought about that. But again, love to see these penguins hanging out here. End of the night, great way to end the night here at SeaWorld, love it. Look at that jumbo king penguin towering over the other penguins. He's like twice, three times their size, like that rock hopper there. He's like a third of his size, but wow. Love to see these penguins, I'm telling you. Really, really nice to see them out here. You know I love penguins, and how can you not? How can you not love to see this many penguins in this little spot? This gives you a fantastic view, you know, very densely populated penguin community. I'm not sure why, but all these king penguins are gathered kind of back here. It seems like a huge group of them and several other penguins. Look, we got a, looks like a rock hopper right there. And just all kinds of penguins hanging out back here. Really nice to see. You can see this guy's got one arm up over there. Beautiful view here to end our night. It was a fantastic adventure at SeaWorld. I really enjoyed my time here. What did you think of this adventure? Are you glad we had a chance to check out SeaWorld? What's your favorite thing about SeaWorld? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And how would you rate this SeaWorld park to some of the other ones? Should you want to see me check those out? Let me know what you think. If you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and let me know you liked it. And again, if you're inspired to visit SeaWorld after this, make sure you check out the links in the description below in this video for access different tickets and that kind of thing so you can check out those links if you are looking for a different type of ticket that you don't see in those links feel free to let me know and i will see if i can make that happen for you thanks so much for being a part of the fun with me today if you haven't already for more fun adventures make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to stay informed and until next time play on